Okay. Now we consider another case, uh, which is also very useful. Uh, suppose D is a rowdown domain in Rn. F is a function, continuous function. And we denote DZ to be U U in R N minus one. So the U Z belongs to D. Ah, what's this? Uh, this is D. Our DZ, given the, our DZ is a subset of RN minus 1. So given a Z here, given a Z here, the DZ is those U, so that UZ belongs to D. So this is our DZ. I use blue. Maybe this is our DZ. A copy of the uh, intersection of the plan xn equal to z, which is the domain. Okay, so DZ is the intersection. DZ is the projection of the intersection of the plan uh, xn equal to z. Which D? XZ equal to, XN equal to Z is a plan. This plan intersect which D is the red segment here. Then you project this red segment into RN minus 1. You got DZ. Okay. So for the other Z, I use a red Z here. Suppose red Z is here. Then the segment is here. You project this into lower dimension. You obtain this. This is the red DZ. Okay, so we have such a DZ. So the result is that the integral of D of f over D equals Mm. That is you integral. You 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 compute the to compute the n fold integral, n dimensional integral. You compute the n minus one dimensional first. Uh, uh, over co compute the n dimensional integral over a changing domain. The domain the integrating domain the dz change depend on z. For, for different Z, you have different integrating domain for, for this inner integral. For example, in this picture, for the blue Z, you have the uh, both uh, horizontal uh, segment DZ. Blue, both uh, horizontal segment. That is the DZ for the blue Z. For the red Z, you have another both red segment DZ. Okay? So the, the, the inner domain change. Okay. So this is quite useful. Ah, uh, this, this theorem is different from the previous theorem we just proved. In the previous theorem, uh, the inner integral is a one dimensional integral. We, we take one dimensional integral first and then n minus one dimension. Okay. But now in this theorem, we take the n minus one dimension over dz first. Then take the uh, single integral. Okay. What's this alpha and the beta? Alpha beta naturally should be the 
highest point and the lowest point of the domain D, right? Ah, sorry. So this is our alpha and this is our beta. Okay, alpha beta is the lowest and the highest point. Uh, or we can write very uh, explicitly. Alpha is the infinite of the last uh, last coordinate for every point over every point in D. And the beta is the supplement. So this is our alpha and beta. Uh, this theorem is quite useful. I will demonstrate how it simplified our computation. Okay. So we prove this theorem first. We take an n minus one dimensional coordinate. The proof. We take a n minus one dimensional uh, rectangle G such that the Cartesian product of G and uh, alpha beta contains D. Uh, this is possible, right? Then for Z in alpha beta, Uh, the general extension. So uh, our rectangle, I will, I will. Uh, this this rectangle is. Um, I use red. This bold red rectangle is our Cartesian product rectangle. Uh, so this part is G. Uh, not 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 very precise. Uh, the this is G. Okay. So uh, we see that for Z between alpha and beta, F D, the general extension of F, U Z, what's this? This will be F U Z. If U belongs to DZ, otherwise it's zero, right? For example, for for the red, for this red Z we discussed before, so the the corresponding DZ is the projection here. That is here. Okay. Now. If a point not belongs to T DZ, suppose a point is here, this point is not in DZ, then the corresponding point is here. This point is the UZ for U not in DZ. Okay, this point, the bold uh, blue point here is a point UZ. For you not in DZ, then uh, this point is not in D. So the value of FD, the zero extension at this point is zero. Okay. Uh, therefore, our integral, our integral is our integral by definition is the integral over the rectangle containing D is the integral of the zero extension over the rectangle containing D. But uh, this integral we can write in iterate integral alpha beta Tz then G F D U Z D U. Now using the result uh, using the result about F Z D here. If U does not belongs to DZ, then FD is zero. If U in DZ, uh, for U in Z, for U in Z, huh? this is true for U in Z. If U does not belong to DZ, 
then f d u z is zero, and if u belongs to d z, then f d is f. Therefore, this can be the inside, the inner integral can be written by d z f u z d u. This is precisely the equality we want to prove. The proof of this theorem is complete. Beautiful.